11.38 p.m. Lagos, Nigeria, Wednesday, the 7th of November, 2019. I'm Dr. Kemi, Kemi Olunloya. And I want to do a really quick video tonight about the EFCC, the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, our anti-graft agency, our financial crimes agency. Now, as you guys know, October should be designated Yahoo Boy Month, National Yahoo Boy Month, because the EFCC actually went out and cracked down on a lot of people engaged in financial crimes of some sort or the other. Well, there were many big arrests. Let's talk about Mumfa. And this is the reason why Mumfa is going to get off easy in that case. Okay, there are many people who have been arrested, many people charged to court different things okay i found out that they arrested mom for three days before you found out in fact i broke the story to you however have you ever thought about this case why did they arrest mom for ismaila mustafa why did they arrest him did they arrest him because he was doing something illegal at least the charging document said mom for was laundering proceeds of crime and using bureau to change to cover up but on the other you know side of the statement it did say that the bureau to change was owned by his siblings he co-owned it but the EFCC also said that he was using it to cover up proceeds of crime okay so let's go to the proceeds of crime there are a lot of Nigerians doing BEC out there love scam yahoo scams all that but let's get to bec because we have one prominent young man 31 years old his birthday is this month it will be 32 will be okay q i think his birthday is november 19th okay is in the hands of the fbi right now he's going to celebrate in prison in america a big nightmare for somebody who was celebrated in forbes bbc focus on africa and so much more a lot of these media outlets celebrate mediocre people. I've always said it, but most of you don't listen to me. You tell me I'm jealous. I knew about Obi a long time ago. I tweeted it last December. Nobody paid attention. It's very important that you listen to me as a journalist. I'm retired now as a journalist, but I'm, you know, working as a digital creator, which is like a fine line. Kemi Talks is my brand. And when Kemi Talks, you should listen. Now... Ismaila Mustafa Monfa. Everybody saw all his cars, his a lot of material stuff, mostly cars and plane flights and all that. I've never seen a house on Monfa's page. So he's not stupid. How many people show their houses after all the money they flashed? At the end of the day, he showed his children, he showed plane flights, he showed a lot of cars. Monfa even if he co-owned a brew to change with his siblings, let's face it, who's he changing money for? We've got to look at it that way. If I need 25,000 pounds sterling, British money now, that's supposedly about 10 million naira. And I got 10 million in this guy that must go on the floor. And I need that 25,000 naira for my surgery in England. I call Monfa up. I don't go to the bank. I want black market rate. I have to have an aboki bring that money to my house, whatnot. So I have to call Monfa. Monfa, I need 25K pounds. I got the money ready. He'll come and pick it up. And see, what Monfa is doing was he was also snapping all those stacks of money. And there was just too much online. When you say too much, what's too much? Can somebody flash their money? After all, they're selling money. It's a job. You sell money, you buy money. Well, this day and age, when you flash too much, in Nigeria, we don't have freedom of expression here. That's just simple freedom of expression. But if the feds are watching you, then you've lost your freedom of expression. They want to know where that money came from. Have you realized that Monfa's clients could be politicians? Who he's changing money for? 
rich businessmen, pastors, name it, rich people. I mean, let's face it, how much have I changed in the black market? I lived in America so many years, Canada, all that, 30-something years, but I remember when I used to come home on a holiday. It wasn't 360, it wasn't 500, it was like 125, and you'll carry your money over there and you'll bring a stack of Naira. The Naira was so devalued. The most I've ever changed is $2,000. Have I bought, mm, I rarely buy currency, because I have bank accounts abroad, and I leave something in it. But selling 2000 what about the people who are selling a lot? Do you remember the GSS guys that robbed the uh, armored truck or the Bruder chain that was changing because that's Saraki's money? Was that not 50 million? When Saraki travels to London, I grew up there as a doctor there. When he travels to London, hey, how does he change money? Mukulai doesn't have to go to the bank. He can do what we do, go to the Aboki. So, Every politician goes to the Aboki, and the Aboki brings the money. So Manfa is one of the Abokis, right? I'm not saying he's Aboki, but you know what I mean. He's one of the Buru to change guys. This is where the thin line is in his case. There is a case, okay, allegedly, I have not been able to confirm it, but I'm sure it's, it's right. Sarami's case, 606. They said... They're taking him for 204 million, 204.1 million because the money was a BEC scheme. Business email compromise. They went into somebody's account in America and stole the money, $566,000. This is why the judge kept Sarami in prison. He was remanded in Equity prison. He wasn't given any bail because of another case in the U.S. with the FBI. If you've noticed, the FBI, they have a legal attache. Le legal attache. They're supposed to say attache, not attache. But legal, some people say attach. <laughs> legal attache. They have a legal attache of the consulate in Lagos, and they file their papers there. And they get warrants and whatnot. What is going on is that this whole scheme with Obi the 77, 80 Nigerians, it's all intertwined not necessarily related but intertwined nigerians and scams our country is corrupt from top to bottom like one singer said naira mali everybody's a thief only everybody his music is still playing their hits but the very same line was sang by the son of a human rights lawyer femi falloner for Larry Fallon of Falls the Bad Guy. He sang the very same line. His song was banned on radio and television. And the video was very, very prominent. This is Nigeria. Everybody be criminal. Which one is tougher? Everybody be criminal or only everybody. Pretty much Naira said everyone's a thief. Everyone is a criminal. I mean, wouldn't you say Falls was right? We have kidnappers, ritualists, armed robbers. Americans State Department had the list this week and they issued a warning to all Americans to stay away from certain parts of Nigeria. If you go to Nigeria at all, it's very hard for business. Cardi B is coming here on the 7th of December, the singer, rapper. Well, does she have to go through the advisory? Yes, even if she's just coming to Lagos to do her concert. They mentioned kidnappers. They mentioned ritual. They mentioned... It's not just Boko Haram today. So, folks, let's really think of it. Some of these cases are just a waste of time. The EFCC hasn't been able to confirm or deny that mom forgot an administrative bill. If you don't know what that is, that's a bill that you can actually go home and report to them every day. All right? Administrative bail. You have to report to them every day. So he may not even be in their custody. He might be in a hotel. That's what I heard. But the EFCC has the right not to confirm or deny because of the integrity of the case, security reasons, and more. Mofa has a lot of money. And who knows what he paid for administrative bail. At the end of the day, 
if he gets himself a good lawyer, I'm talking about good lawyer, you know, hey, let me see, a criminal lawyer who's based in the United States, who also has the bar here and can really defend him, he'll get off. Did he launder the money or he changed the money? Very thin line. Azumi Sarumi indeed. Well, the feds in America, the FBI said Sarumi indeed had something to do with scamming $566,000. And they found the $204.1 million in his account. <laughs> I'm waiting for the EFC to say they're getting a court order so they can forfeit it. So they shouldn't be doing that. It's a law, but it's wrong. They did that for OKK. Okay they cannot extradite Sarumi to America to face charges. We don't have an extradition treaty. We have politicians who carry drugs and who stole money and did this and that, took bribes. They haven't been extradited. Buruji Kashamu is still there. So some of these cases are mere waste of time. I'm just telling you this for information only. And this is my opinion as Kemi talks. You're the ones that always tell me, talk about this, talk about that. So I talked about Mumford. Mumford's charges may be gone. Because one thing I know the EFCC would not like is for Mumford to name all the people that have been changing money. And changing money is not just assuming Sarumi changed his 566000 with Mumford and got the 204 million. What about all the politicians who are also changing money that doesn't belong to them, that they stole from the government, assuming they did? We have a history of politicians looting the government. They have to change it. They can't carry these monies through the banks. If you don't know it, you know it now. Do you know that if your father or your mother or you're a daughter of a politician in Nigeria, you can't even open a bank account in Canada? Yes, you didn't know? Well, you're knowing now. While I was in Canada, I tried to open a bank account in one other side of Canada that I moved to. The bank forms in Canada standard because of funding terrorism. It'll ask you a question. Have you ever been related to a politician in a foreign country, son, daughter of a politician in a foreign country, a member of your family, a sibling? They ask you this question. Your best bet is to lie and say no if you want that account open. I don't lie. I'm too transparent. I said yes. Who? My father was a governor 35 years ago. And they denied my application. The bank said they couldn't open the account because politicians from African countries loot money a lot and they also fund terrorism. Look what happened in Congo, Rwanda, all the genocide leaders, they all fed to Canada and all over the world. So I couldn't open that account at that bank. So I had to go to another bank and lie on the form. No, I'm not really to any politician. This is life. This is how it is. Because of money laundering, because of terrorism, because of many things, we've gotten into trouble as Nigerians. So that's what I wanted to tell you today on Kemi Talks. Information as always. Good night.